All right, so we're coming back to you for another video discussion today. And in this one, we want to talk about shed hunting. So we get a lot of questions from people in our area and not, but um, about where we find sheds, how we find them, how we like to hunt for them, and where we do. So yeah. I guess we can kind of dive into it. Jake's, I mean, just snagged a pile of them this year. So <laughs> We give Jake a hard time. He doesn't get to get out near as much as Easton and I. No, but, but even <laughs> even though, and I, I don't know what this is, because I can I can see things that look like sheds i can find small bones that these guys can't find <laughs> you have the eye for the white but for whatever reason they're always a step ahead of me and so in my entire lifetime i think i've found three total sheds and one was a match set and that's it that's pretty cool though because i match sets like plague us i've got I, one same i got one i've got I one too about 50 sheds yeah it's crazy but yeah what i think it's really changed for us for me, it was last year. I've always been infatuated. Is that the right word? Infatuated. Yeah. Infatuated with shed hunting. It's super, it's just fun. I mean, I love it. But I used to always go into like the thickest, nastiest parts of the properties I could hunt. I remember, be, I remember walking into a place and having to crawl on our hands and knees on yep. these tiny little game trails looking for shed antlers. And you're like sitting there racking your brain like, why is there not an antler? Like there's... There's multiple rows hanging everywhere. Like you'd think a buck walking through there would knock his antlers right off. And I think plain and simple, not always, but bucks aren't in that stuff this time no, of year. They in have my to be opinion. there to drop the antler. Exactly. Exactly. And I think this time of year, or when they're dropping their sheds, they went through a hard rut. Who knows? Maybe they got hit by a car, shot with an arrow, injured. And they're lazy, they're tired, they're wore out, they want food, they want protection, and they want to be able to see things. So I think a lot of times they're in open hardwoods. They're with living food. easy this time of year, and there's no hunting pressure either. You're still gonna get pressure, you know, people hiking around as the weather gets nicer and all that, but it's not the same type of pressure they were seeing yeah. in October, November, December. Good, good point. And they know that too. Yeah, they're not they, dumb. They can, yeah, they know the difference between the dude sneaking. 200 yards back to his tree stand and someone walking their dog on yep. a hiking trail. Yeah, for sure. Which you, I, you can combat the whole, they, on, like, they only have to be somewhere one time to drop an antler. And I think about that when I'm shed hunting is, don't not go to certain spots because you're right, like, well, right. they're gonna be in the open hardwoods. Right. But don't focus on those thinking that's where, gonna, where all the antlers are gonna be. And so I think about that often is, yeah, they're not probably living in those thick, nasty right. areas, but I also try to keep in the back of my head, a deer only has to go to a place one time yep. to drop his antler, which is why you find them in your backyard or people find them in the road. Mm -hmm. Deer aren't living in the road, I can guarantee you that, but yep. at the same yeah, time- they don't, they don't bed there. They, they're not bedding there, <laughs> but- Only if it's a double yellow. Yeah, but they're, I mean, they can drop an antler there. So I, I keep both in mind, but yeah, when you're shed hunting, the obvious place you're gonna to wanna to be is where the deer are most. Yep. And those thick areas, if they butt up to a standing bean field or a cut corn field, maybe you would find more in there. But I think I what we're see that. What we when we're talking about shed hunting open hardwoods, it's if you wanna find like consistent antlers, because we still walk it all. We go to the thickest, nastiest Absolutely. stuff still. Because when we're shed hunting, we're not just looking for antlers, we're scouting for the next year and trying to find sign from the previous year just to make us better hunters. So yeah, walk it all. But I think if you're looking for consistent antlers, if you have, yeah. the property we're on right now has a hardwoods on it that I found three antlers in this year. And I have never found an antler in those hardwoods until this year, but we had an awesome acorn crop in that woods. Like, yeah. they're, still, they're still just, yeah, standing acorns yep. and they're like And for the, for the first time since we've hunted this property, the, the field right next to it is cut corn. So, I mean, I guess it could be coincidence, but to me that's, a, a recipe of, to find yeah, sheds. A lot of nutrients still left in that field. Yeah. You know, corn. Well, I think that's that's a key point from the guy who knows nothing about finding sheds is that <laughs> the deer go through through phases in their in their life cycle through a year, and so in the summertime they're hitting beans hard because they're putting on antler mass. Yeah. In the fall they don't give a crap about food. They're trying to breed because yeah. it's the rut. That's yeah. what they do. This time of year. They want to expend the least amount of energy possible Absolutely. and stay as close to the highest possible nutrient-rich food source that they yep. can. 
And for us right now, like you said, it's acorn crops and cut corn. So there, there's your recipe to try to find sheds. Right. You don't want to be in a multi-floral rose thicket if there's a cut cornfield a half a mile away because you're probably not going to find as many sheds as often year to year in that spot. There probably won't be many deer in there, period. Yeah. They're, they're wanting food, and we've gotten lucky with a pretty easy winter. We're heading into spring now, but, yeah, they're not going to want to be mm-hmm. – a half mile away from your food source. Now the difference there though is we're in ag country. If you're in northern Michigan in the UP where it's unbroken timber for acres and acres and acres at a time, then you do need to start considering multi rows as a potential food source in the winter months when yeah. there is nothing else to eat yep. because they're going to gravitate to those spots. Yeah, so you got to know your own areas. It'll depend on where you're at. Yeah, area to area. We're speaking farm country, yep. blocks of timber mixed in between. Southern Ohio, I do hunt some, but yeah, for the most part, close to food sources, depending on what those are in your area. Yeah. Oh, two, like the thick areas, this is my opinion. I don't know if I'm not a biologist. I don't know if this is right, wrong, or indifferent, but it's not a secret that this time of year, they get back into their bachelor groups. Bucks usually group up. Does usually group up. Yeah, they might be intermixed feeding or whatever, but for the most part, they stay separate. And I think those thick areas a lot of times are occupied by the does because they're carrying their fawns right now and they feel safe. And I know when we walk through some thick areas, we jump out a pile of does and yep. sometimes there's no bucks. So those areas I think are occupied too, whereas the bucks, there's no vegetation right now. They can chill out on a point in an open hardwoods and see forever. And I think that gives them. I mean, they rely on their eyes. If they, danger's coming, they sneak out of there without yeah. anyone knowing. Yep. Wind at their back. And we've seen that a lot this year, finding sheds. It's just like, when you find the shed, take the time to think about it. Don't yeah. don't pick, I mean, don't just pick it up and run along with yeah. it. If you're trying to learn about the property or the deer specifically, when you find that shed, think about it. Yeah, he may have just been walking on a yeah. deer trail, dropped it, and it may mean nothing. Mm-hmm. However... Was he bedded there? Why? Was the wind at his back? Is he facing over a food source? Is he not? Or why was he walking that specific trail? Yeah, he could be headed to a food source or you never know. So that's something that you guys are both doing now, right? I don't have the luxury because I don't have any antlers. But (laughs) (laughs) and I don't I don't think there's people out there who do they'll tag the antlers that they find with the location. You're even doing GPS coordinates, right? Yeah. So the the date maybe the weather, things like that, to try to help understand and to be able to reference back where you found those antlers. But I think more importantly, it's just the fact that you're writing that information down. Yeah. There's tons of studies out there that show if you write a piece of information down, you're 10 times more likely to remember it. Yeah. So you don't even have to go back and reference it. That information is going to be solidified in your brain for a longer period of time just by writing that tag down when you yep. find a shed yeah that's a good point and something i wanted to talk about i just i've been taking just like a strip of tape and taping it around the antler and using a sharpie to to mark it but you got some cool tags right yeah that was there was a company big eight products is what they were called and they make a tag for it with a a little spot for the name location um if you know the deer the name and then the date you found it and other there's a little open spot where you can put other information that you might want to put on there so definitely an organized way to kind of keep a method to your madness if you have a pretty good pile of them going on at home for sure well plus it's so depressing i know i didn't used to do that until i think you started doing it last year so i have sheds in my pile from when i was young and i pick them up and i'm like i don't remember for the life of me where this was and that sucks i got lucky i remember that day i i was like i need to go back and do this before i forget and i was racking my brain there was like smoke coming out of my ears just (laughs) just trying to figure out where some of these came from but we got her all good so and we've got a couple questions within the last couple weeks about what we do with the antlers um don't give them to dogs i was gonna say (laughs) that's not what we do i made that mistake once never again um obviously store them for information but you can decorate with them i mean i i always have like an image in my mind of when i'm 80 years old some I don't know, some sales kid or something will come into my house that happens to be a big hunter. I want to be able to be like, hey, come look at my shed collection, you know? Like, I think that's super cool when you're picking them up saying, this was, you know, here, this was there. This one I found when I was your age. Like, I think that's all super cool. So it's just like collecting baseball cards to me. Like, yeah, it's... and to think about it, like, in 30, 40 years, like, imagine if someone 
who hunted this exact property 50 years ago had sheds. Yeah. It was like, this deer lived here 50 years ago. Yeah. Like, that deer's been dead yeah. 10 times his own lifetime. That's so a, cool. You know? Yeah, so Just cool. Just to think about that. So I'll be able to show my grandkids and be like, this is a deer that lived here. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. Hopefully that's awesome. they're killing a lot bigger bucks than that. So. <laughs> right. Jake usually with his sheds, since he only has a few, when we go shed hunting, he'll bring them just so he can pull them out. And I don't want to feel left out. <laughs> I got to have something. Jake's shed pile's got like rib bones and like <laughs> raccoon skulls. Not, nah, I'd be taking antidepressants for I sure. Think <laughs> we joke, but I think he's actually doing it. Jake's been putting all the sheds that Nick and I have been finding out. He'll sneak out there the day before we go walk a property and lay them out for us. No, man, us I, have, I have a shed hunting infrared light. <laughs> he's, all, he's all about the kids. He wants us <laughs> to enjoy it. So, Oh, man. He, he's quite the guy. That's funny. Um, and as far as the time frame we shed hunt, there is no set time frame. People are like, oh, why are you going so early? You picked up a shed December 23rd this year, right? He shed both sides on December 23rd. I went and looked for it right at the first of the year and I didn't end up picking it up I want to say until January 23rd so it was a couple weeks but yeah I mean that's the thing people are like why would you go in there you know so early you're gonna spook other deer out that are trying to shed I don't worry about that I really don't um yeah so use the cameras to your advantage For sure. I that's absolutely how I base when I shed hunt on or you know driving around fields if you see shed bucks well yeah it means there's probably antlers, antlers in there. Yep. People are get too caught up and worried about bumping deer. Mm -hmm. I worry about finding the antlers before the squirrels do. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and we just saw a buck. Today is March 19th. We just saw a buck a couple days ago, a really nice buck with both sides. So uh, the shed season can be as long or as short as you want it to be. Uh, bucks, I've seen them deep into April with both sides on it. It just depends. You were turkey hunting in Kentucky and found a shed. Two yeah. sheds, right? Yeah. So, I mean, you can you can go out and do a prescribed fire and find in, sheds. Yeah. And find sheds. I so. found a shed off of the biggest buck I've ever shot on October, I want to say October 13th, yeah. laying on the side of a trail, an ATV trail, that we've had atvs on quads on we've walked it a thousand times and we were going in to hunt a ground blind and we're walking and it's laying right on the side of the trail which the only way i can explain that would be a coyote picking yeah. it up like a squirrel's not picking up no nope. an yeah. antler with a 12 inch g2 no dude he just carried it that long yeah, yeah he, he just, just didn't well, shed it until october <laughs> so, yeah so it, i mean you you can find sheds yeah from years prior so there's really no end to shed season mm -hmm. just kind of we eventually get caught up in turkeys and kind of other of, things yeah take other priority things. yeah but yeah i found that one tracking one of your deer in the pitch black yeah you found <laughs> a couple on a property that i've never found any and that's the property I spend all my time on. It's because I'm there all the time placing them out like Jake does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Taking care of the kids. <laughs> but that's kind of uh, the, the gist of what we wanted to cover as far as shed hunting goes, I think. Um, it's, I think, a growing sport, if you will. It's a lot of fun. Well, it's Biggest, cheap. You don't have to buy a tag. Right. You don't have to buy a license. You don't need a gun. You don't need a bow. You don't even right. need to be a hunter. Just walk, no. basically. Well, I say just walk, but be aware of the property lines. Um... If you have permission to shed hunt somewhere, you know, just respect the property lines and the boundaries and be smart, use your head. So, yeah, if you have questions, shoot them to us. We love talking shed hunting and hopefully can give you For sure. some pointers. And if you want to find any like skeletal, skeletorial, uh, like raccoons guy. or whatever. He can get you pointed in guy. some <laughs> killer spots. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you on the next one. blood on it but that thing's old that's definitely this year yeah i can find shed antlers